Chapter 26 DC Circuits Units of Chapter 26 include EMF and terminal voltage, resistors in series and parallel, Kirchhoff rules, series and parallel EMFs, battery charging, circuits containing resistor and capacitor, RC circuits, electric hazards, ammeters, and voltmeters. Ammeters and voltmeters. Section 1. EMF and terminal voltage. Electric circuit needs battery or generator to produce current. These are called sources of EMF. Electromotive force. Battery is a nearly constant voltage source, but does have a small internal resistance which reduces the actual voltage from the ideal EMF. We describe the V between the terminals of a battery as the script E, which is the ideal EMF, minus IR, and R is the internal resistance of the battery. This resistance behaves as though it were in series with the EMF. Here is a cartoon showing the voltage difference between the terminals of the battery, VAB. A plus sign and a minus sign indicate the two terminals of a battery. But inside this battery, we have the EMF, ideal voltage of a battery, and the R, internal resistance of the battery, which reduces the actual voltage of the battery. Okay, let's look at problem number four from the book as an example. What is the internal resistance of a 12-volt car battery whose terminal voltage drops to 8.2 voltage and the starter motor draws 95 amps? What is the resistance of this starter? So we look at figure 26.2 for a circuit diagram for this problem. And in this figure, we see this is A and this is terminal B. What we have is the resistance R, so battery EMF, and what we have is VAB is equal to EMF minus IR. We can solve it for R as E minus VAB divided by. I. So we have 12 volt, it drops to 8.2 volts, divided by 95 amp, and this gives us 0 0.040 ohms or 40 milliohm. And VAB is equal to IR, the resistance of the starter. And R is given as VAB divided by I. Say we have 8.2 volts, and it draws 95 amperes, and gives us 0.086 ohms. This is the resistance of the starter. Section 2. Resistors in series and in parallel. A series connection has a single path from the battery through each circuit element in turn, then back to the battery. Here we can see the three resistors R1, R2, and R3 are connected in series to a battery. And each of them, they have a voltage drop of V1, V2, and V3, respectively. In a series configuration, the current through each resistor is the same. The voltage depends on the resistance. The sum of the voltage drops across the resistors equal the battery voltage. So the voltage is equal to the sum of voltages across each resistor, V1 plus V2 plus V3, and it's equal to I times R1 plus I times R2 plus I times R3, a common current passing through each resistor. 
From this, we get the equivalent resistance, that single resistance that gives the same current in the circuit. So for a series configuration, the equivalent resistor is equal to the sum of individual resistance in series, R1 plus R2 plus R3. On the other hand, a parallel connection splits the current. The voltage across each resistor is the same. As we can see on the left, we have a diagram of three resistors, R1, R2, and 3 are connected in parallel with the same voltage. So we have the same voltage of VAB between the three resistors, but the current I is a split between the three resistors. So current I1 goes through resistor R1, current I2 passes through resistor I2, and the same story for and current I3 passes through resistor R3. We can think of this situation where we have three lamps are connected in parallel to a single battery. For this configuration, we have an equivalent resistor replacing this configuration. This is equivalent to having a single resistance of three parallel resistors connected to the battery. The total current is the sum of the currents across each resistor. So we say total current I is equal to the sum of I1 plus I2 plus I3. If we use the off's law and replace I with the voltage over resistor, we have equal voltages across the three resistors here. And we have V over RQ, REQ is equal to V over R1 plus V over R2 plus V over R3. And this gives the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance for the parallel configuration of connecting three resistors in parallel. We have 1 over RQ, REQ is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus R1 over R3. An analogy using water may be helpful in visualizing parallel circuits. The water or current splits into two streams, each follows the same height, and a total current is the sum of the two currents. With two pipes open, the resistance to water flow is half what it is with one pipe open. As an example, let's look at problem number 12 from the book. Eight identical bulbs are connected in series across a 120 volt line. A asks what is the voltage across each bulb, and B asks if the current is 0.65 ampere, what is the resistance of each bulb, and what is the power dissipated in each. So for part A, we know that each bulb I should get one eighth of the total voltage. So these resistors are connected in series. So we have resistance one, resistance two, resistance three, to resistance eight, and the resistance equivalent for the series configuration, R EQ is equal to 8R. The R resistance is equal to resistance R. And the current is flowing through all the bulbs. So we have V total is equal to I times R equivalent. And we can solve it for I as V total divided by R equivalent is equal to V total divided by 8R. And the voltage across one bulb is found from the also. So we have V equals to V total divided by 8R. This is uh, substituting for I multiplied by R, and we will have V total divided by 8 across each bulb. So we have 120 volts divided by 8 
which means that we have 15 volts, the voltage across each bulb. For part B, which is asking about the power dissipated, we say what is the current? V total is equal over 8R. Let's solve it for R. V total divided by 8I, and we know that I, the current, is 0.65. So let's plug in the numbers, 120 volts divided by 8, multiplied by 0.65 amperes, and it gives us 23.08 ohms. So for the power dissipated, we can use the equation I squared R is equal to 0.65 ampere squared times 23.08 ohms. That is equal to 9.751 watts, or almost 9.8 watts of power is being dissipated in each bulb. Another example, problem number 22 from the book. Two resistors, when connected in series to a 120 volt line, use one fourth the power that is used when they are connected in parallel. If one resistor is 4.3 kilovolt, what is the resistance of the other? So, in this problem, it is given that the power used when the resistors are in series is one fourth. They power used when the resistors are in parallel. We know that the voltage is the same in both cases. We can use equation 25-7B along with the definition of the series and parallel equivalent resistors. And we say power in series is equal to one fourth power in parallel. And let's use V squared divided by R in series is equal to one fourth V squared divided by R for parallel configuration. And this way, voltages are equal. So we have R equivalent in series is equal to four times R equivalent in parallel configuration. So we have two resistors, so we have R1 plus R2 in series configuration equal to four times one over R1 plus one over R2 inverse, which is equal to four times R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So if we do some calculations. We have R1 plus R2 squared is equal to 4 times R1 R2 and this can be expanded as R1 squared plus 2 R1 R2 plus R2 squared is equal to 4 R1 R2. Let's subtract 4 R1 R2 from both sides so this becomes minus 2 R1 R2 and that becomes R1 minus R2 squared is equal to zero. That means that R1 is equal to R2. Thus, the two resistors must be the same. So if one of the resistors is 4.3 kilo ohm, the other resistors should be also 4.3 Kilo. Section 3. Kirchhoff's Rules. Some circuits cannot be broken down into series and parallel connections. For these circuits, we use Kirchhoff's Rule. The junction rule says the sum of currents entering a junction equals the sum of the currents leaving it. For example, in point A, current I3 enters from the right, and currents I1 and I2 exit. So we can say 
I3 equals I1 plus I2. Current I1 is passing through a 30 ohm, passing through H, passes through D. So if you look at point D, I1 enters, also I2 from down here enters, and it gives out to I3. So the junction rule for point D is equal to the junction rule for point A. The loop rule, the sum of the changes in potential around a closed loop is zero. So here, if you start from uh, point D, as we go across a, a battery from point D to point E, the voltage increases from zero to plus 12. From point E to point A, the voltage is constant. There is nothing to increase the voltage. There is nothing to consume the electric power or drop and leads to a drop of the electric potential. So the electric potential is constant from E to A, but from A to B, the resistance will drop and eat some of the voltages. So it drops down to a level from B to C also drops further, and from C to D, the electric voltage is the same. So C and D are EQ voltage points. So we see from a loop of point D all the way back to point D again, the sum of the potential changes around this closed loop should end up in zero. Problem solving using Kirchhoff rules. One, label each current, including its direction. Two, identify unknowns. Three, apply junction and loop rules. You will need as many in an equations as, as there are unknowns. Four, solve the equations, being careful with signs. If the solution for a current is negative, that current is in the opposite direction from the one you have chosen. All right, as an example, let's look at problem number 28 from the book. Determine the terminal voltage of each battery in figure 2652, which is depicted here. By applying the Kirchhoff's loop rule to the circuit starting at the upper left corner, at this point, of the circuit diagram, we can calculate the current and we can assume that the current is flowing clockwise. This is the current, but if the current ends up with a negative value, it means that our initial guess or assumption was not true. So we have to consider it the other way. So starting from the upper left corner, so we have minus I times two ohms of the voltage drop across this one when we go from the negative sign of the battery to the positive sign we have an increase in the voltage it passed through the second resistor and then we have another 5.8 times i drop of the voltage it passed through the second battery but this time from the positive to negative terminal so we have a drop of the voltage we also pass through the final resistor so we have another drop of the voltage of one ohm time i the total should be zero because we close loop so we should pay attention to the battery terminals and the signages note that for the 12 volt battery there is a voltage gain going across its internal resistance from negative to positive due to the direction of the current. We can solve this for current I. So we say I is equal to 6 volt divided by 8.8 .8 ohms, and that gives us plus point. 
682 amperes. And that means that our initial guess of the current direction was correct, which is a clockwise direction, and the current is 0.682 amperes. So for the terminal voltage of each battery, for the 18 volt battery, we have V terminal is equal to 18 volt minus I times 2 ohms. That is 18 minus 0.682 times 2. That gives us 16.64 volts, almost 17 volts. For the 12 volt battery, we have V terminal is equal to 12 volt plus because of the current direction is opposite to the terminals of the battery we are gaining some voltage so we have i times 1 ohm and then this will be 12 plus 0.682 volts which is almost 13 volt that's the terminal voltage of the 12 volt battery section 4 series and parallel emfs battery charging emfs in series is in the same direction total voltage is the sum of the separate voltages here we can see the two batteries are connected in series and in the same direction so we have the 1.5 battery from point a to b the line direction with the second battery all at the same direction from negative to positive from low voltage to higher voltage in this scenario the total voltage is the sum of the two batteries on the other hand, EMFs in series, but with opposite directions, the total voltage is the difference, but the lower voltage battery is charged. Here in this scenario, we have a 12 volt battery in opposite direction to the 20 volt battery. So as the 20 volt battery is drained, the 12 volt battery is gaining power and it's being charged. EMFs in parallel only make sense if the voltages are the same. This arrangement can produce more current than a single EMF. So these two batteries of 12 volt are connected in parallel, means that the negative terminals and the positive terminals are connected together, and we are gaining more current than a single EMF. Section 5, circuits containing resistor and capacitor, RC circuits. Here in the right, we will see a circuit which has a EMF of the battery with a switch S, a capacitance C, and a resistance R connected in series. When the switch is closed, capacitor starts to charge. As it does, the voltage across it increases and the current through the resistor start to decrease. So if you plot the EMF of the battery, so EMF of the circuit as a function of time, as we can see at different time steps of T equal RC, 2RC, 3RC, etc. The voltage across the capacitor start to increase to get to the level that the voltage across the capacitor reaches to the value of EMF or E. The current in this circuit will gradually drop as time goes on from a maximum value of E over R. As time goes on, it drops to zero when the capacitor is fully charged. To find the voltage as a function of time, we write the equation for the voltage changes around the loop. 
we say EMF equals to IR plus Q over C, which is the voltage drop of the capacitor. Since Q is DI over DT, we can integrate to find the charge as a function of time. So charge Q is equal to C times E times 1 minus E exponential of minus T over RC. The voltage across the capacitor is Q over C. Therefore, the voltage across the capacitor is E from F of the battery times 1 minus exponential of minus T over RC. The quantity RC that appears in the exponent is called the time constant of the circuit. And we define it as tau equals RC. The current at any time T can be found by differentiating the charge. I equals dQ over dT the derivative of charge over time, and it's equal to the EMF over R times exponential of minus T over RC. If an isolated charge capacitor is connected across a resistor, it discharges. The rate of the charge discharge from the capacitance into an RC circuit is equal to a Q naught times exponential of minus T over RC. And as we can see, the voltage across the capacitor drops exponentially over time as it transfers its electric energy and electric charges to the resistor. Once again, the voltage and current as a function of time can be found from the charge. V or potential across the capacitor, Vc equals V naught times exponential of minus T over RC and I equals minus DQ over DT, which is equal to Q naught over RC exponential of minus T over RC. And this is equal to I naught times exponential of minus T over RC. All right, let's look at problem number 46 as an example. How long does it take for the energy stored in a capacitor in a series RC circuit to reach 75% of its maximum value? Express answer in terms of the time constant tau equals RC. So by expressing the stored energy in terms of the charge on the capacitor, we use the equation 24-5. And the charge on the capacitor is given by equation 26-6a. So the energy stored is equal to 1 half Q squared over C. Let's plug in the value for Q is equal to C. Electromotive force 1 minus E to the power minus T over tau squared divided by C. So we'll have one half C EMF squared one minus E to the power minus T over tau squared. We can write it down as U max times one minus E to the power minus T over tau squared. From the problem, we say U is equal to 0.75 U max. Let's plug in these values. So we have U max times 1 minus E to the power minus T over tau squared is equal to 0.75 U max. Means that U max will cancel out on the two sides. And we can solve it for T. So we have 1 minus E to the power T over tau squared is equal to 0.75. Can write it down as 1 minus e to the power minus t over tau equals to the square root of 0.75. We have e to the power minus t over tau equals 1 minus the square root of 0.75. 
take the natural log from both sides. We have minus t over tau equals natural log of 1 minus square root of 0.75 and t is equal to minus tau natural log of 1 minus the square root of 0.75 and that is equal to 2.01 tau where tau is r times c. Section 6. Electric hazards. Most people can feel a current of 1 milliamp. A few milliamp of current begins to be painful. Currents above 10 milliamp may cause uncontrollable muscle contractions, making rescue difficult. Currents around 100 milliamp passing through torso can cause death by ventricular fibrillations. Higher currents may not cause fibrillation, but can cause severe burns. Household voltage can be lethal if you are wet and in good contact with the ground, and you should be very careful. The person receiving a shock has become part of a complete circuit. Here on top we see a person is touching a wire, on one side goes through a 120 volt through the ground, and by holding one side of the wire, having one foot on the ground, it completes the circuit and the current passes through the body of this dude here. The lower figure shows a faulty device like a hair dryer, and by touching the faucet containing water, which can be considered as a doctor, it completes the circuit and electricity can be lethal to this person. Faulty wiring and improper grounding can be hazardous. Make sure electrical work is done by a professional. A proper wiring where we have a device connected to a 100 volt power outlet and if somebody touches this device, the current properly passes through the device, but it's not in touch with the user. But if there is something faulty in the device and the current passes directly to the person, instead of the circuit designated for the device, it can complete the circuit through the body of the person and it can give a shock to the person. This can be avoided by adding some ground line inside the device in case if somebody touches the device and it's faulty, the actual current passes through the body of the device, goes through the ground of the outlet, not through the body of the person using the device. Therefore, the safest plugs are those with three prongs. They have a separate ground line. Here is an example of household wiring. Colors can vary though. Be sure you know which is the hot wire before you do anything. Section 7. Ammeters and voltmeters. An ammeter measures current. A voltmeter measures voltage. Both are based on galvanometers, unless they are digital. The current in a circuit passes through the ammeter. The ammeter should have low resistance so as not to affect the current. So here we have a symbolic notation of an ammeter with letter A in a circle. And on the right we have more descriptive cartoon showing what's going on inside an ammeter. We have a, a current IR passing through the shunt resistor. And on the top we have the current of a galvanometer. A voltmeter should not affect the voltage across the circuit element is measuring. Therefore, its resistance should be very large to ensure that there is no current going to pass through that. The symbolic notation for the voltmeter is shown on the left. V inside a circle so have a resistance in series with a galvanometer resistance. An ohmmeter measures resistance. 
it requires a battery to provide a current. Here is a representation of an ohmmeter where it's going to be attached to the two terminals of a resistor to be measured. And it's composed of a battery with its internal uh, resistor and a shunk resistance and the manometer. In summary, for the circuit shown in A, an ammeter is your current I. A voltmeter must be in parallel with the voltage it is to measure. As we can see, if you want to measure the voltage across resistor R1, you have to connect it in parallel. Let's look at problem number 58 in the book as an example. A, galvan a galvanometer has an internal resistance of 32 ohm and deflects full scale for 48 microamp current. Describe how to use this galvanometer to make A, an ammeter to read current up to 25 amperes, and B, a voltmeter to give a full scale deflection of 250 volts. To make an ammeter, a shunt resistor must be placed in parallel with a galvanometer. The voltage across the shunt resistor might be voltage across the galvanometer. So we say the voltage across the shunt resistor should be equal to the voltage of galvanometer. So we have I of full, current full, minus the current through the galvanometer multiplied by shunt resistance should be equal to the current through the galvanometer multiplied by the resistors of the galvanometer. Let's solve this for the shunt resistor is equal to IG RG divided by I full minus I galvanometer. So let's plug in the numbers. We have 48 times 10 to the power of minus 6 ampere multiplied by 32 ohms divided by divided by 25 ampere minus 48 times 10 to the power of minus 6 ampere. And that gives us 6.1 times 10 to the power of minus 5 ohms. For part B, to make a voltmeter, a resistor must be placed in series with a galvanometer so that the desired full scale voltage corresponds to the full scale current of the galvanometer. So we say V of full scale for the voltmeter is equal to the current through the galvanometer multiplied by the series resistors plus the galvanometer resistor. Let's solve it for the series resistor which is equal to full scale voltage over current through the galvanometer minus the resistor of the galvanometer. So R series is equal to 250 volt divided by 48 times 10 to the power of minus 6 ampere minus 32 ohms. And get gives us 5.2 times 10 to the power 6 ohm, or it's called 5.2 mega ohm. Summary of chapter 26. A source of EMF transforms energy from some other form of electrical energy. A battery is a source of EMF in parallel with an internal resistance. Resistors in series. The equivalent resistor is equal to the sum of each resistor. Equivalent resistor for the resistors in parallel has a reciprocal relation. We have 1 over R equal is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And it can be extended to 
other terms if we have more resistors in parallel connected. Kirchhoff's rules include sum of currents entering a junction equals sum of currents leaving it and total potential difference around closed loop is zero. RC circuit has a characteristic time constant tau equals R times C. To avoid shocks, don't allow your body to become part of a complete circuit. Ammeter measures current, voltmeter measures voltage.